Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to the next edition of CALFI Now. And our guest today is Councilman Kerry McCormick of the third ward of Cleveland City Council. Councilman McCormick, welcome. Good morning, Ray. Councilman McCormick, for, for those of you who may not know, Councilman McCormick represents probably one of the most diverse wards in the neighborhood, or in, in, in downtown, I'm sorry. Cont contains uh, the downtown neighborhood, Tremont, Ohio City, uh, the stockyards. Uh, he is also a very, very busy person on council. Uh, he is the chair of uh, the city's Health and Human Services Committee and also serves on finance, development, planning, and utilities. So thank you for taking the time uh, to be with us this morning and, uh, and go over some things that are really affecting all, everybody in the city of Cleveland and, 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 and all the surrounding areas too. So thank you again, Councilman. Thank you for having me, Ray. Um, let's just kind of go around the horn in, in all the neighborhoods that you represent and talk a little bit about some of the real exciting things that are going on. We're, I think we're kind of aware of some of the challenges. But let's talk about some of the real exciting things that are going on in all these neighborhoods. And let's start with one of my favorite places, Tremont. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, again, Ray, thank you for having me on. And I'll say I've got a really dynamic ward uh, being downtown on the near west side. And I've got, it's really a, a great place to represent because I've got really unique neighborhoods in the city of Cleveland. They all have their own identity, but they're also interconnected. Um, Tremont uh, is, is no exception to that by any means. It is a uh, incredible, vibrant neighborhood based in arts and culinary scene and, and culture. And it has a long, interesting history that kind of stretches the story of the city of Cleveland when it comes to immigration, when it comes to industrialization. Um, and you can see that today in Tremont, even in some of the, um, you know, uh, more recent updates like the towpath, which I'll chat about in a second. But again, this is a neighborhood that has a long history um, and it's got everything from beautiful Victorian homes uh, to workers' cottages, right? That, uh, were built to house folks that were working in the steel mills. Um, over the years, it has gained a, a very well-earned reputation for being a thriving place for arts, art galleries, culture, music, dance. I mean, the way that Lincoln Park is programmed in the summer is second to none uh, from an arts and cultural perspective. And then you layer on top of that, uh, the, the food scene in Tremont, which again, has some of the best restaurants in Northeast Ohio there. Um, and then, you know, in addition to that, uh, I think the, the secret sauce to all of it, Ray, is that we have such a dynamic and committed group of residents in Tremont um, that take personal responsibility over the well-being of the neighborhood. And that, over the decades, has really led it to where it is today. Yeah, it really is a, a, an amazing, amazing neighborhood uh, in, in, in the Cleveland area. You know, another, another really up-and-coming area, seen a lot of development uh, recently, and is again, very diverse, right? A very diverse part of your ward is Ohio City. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about some of the really kind of cool things, exciting things that are going on in Ohio City. Yeah, sure. So Ohio City, uh, which has a really interesting history as well. It was actually a city, a, a, a uh, city before the city of Cleveland was. It was a separate entity from the city of Cleveland uh, to be annexed by the city in 1854. Um, a really interesting place that was founded by the Connecticut Western Reserve. So it's got, you know, these, these alleyway systems and streets that if you're driving around the neighborhood, you might think, oh, this isn't intuitive, but it was built that way based off of an East Coast model. That's why you'll see the brick alleyways in the neighborhood and the historic homes and uh, treasures like the West Side Market uh, St. Ignatius's campus and otherwise. So uh, another beautiful um, historic neighborhood. It is on the National Register, Register of Historic Places, the large part of the neighborhood. Um, and it's a fascinating neighborhood. Similar to Tremont, um, it has seen the story of Cleveland. So the immigration story, the ups and downs, uh, and mo more recently has seen a tremendous amount of investment, both in um, bricks and mortar, but also in human capital. So for example, uh, we've seen a big, you know, housing growth in Ohio City, uh, we've, but we've also seen, uh, you know, a, a huge increase in our uh, small, locally owned small businesses that have opened their doors in the Ohio City neighborhood. And at the same time, in 2012, we launched a recreation league with 67 kids playing T-ball ray, and now we have 1,200 children across the entire Near West Side. Uh, they're participating in, in the Near West Rec League. So, you know, it's not just about uh, the great progress we're making in housing or small business. It's about that human interaction. And we're seeing that happen in our Near West Side neighbors, including Ohio City. You know, another, another neighborhood that really doesn't get discussed a lot 
uh, is, uh, is the stockyards. And I know mm -hmm. that there's a lot of really, really exciting things happening in that area. Why don't you discuss a little bit about that? Yeah, first? sure. So stockyards, look, it, it, it's one of my favorite neighborhoods. And I'll just say that it's got the folks that live in stockyards are so committed to the neighborhood uh, and down to earth. And that's what I love. I love walking the streets of stockyards and knocking on doors and talking to people. Um, and really, Ray, what, what's interesting about it is uh, it's right kind of in the um, uh, in the center part of a ton of investment going on right now in the city of Cleveland. Uh, you've got Metro Health investing a billion dollars in the Clark Fulton area. You've got Ohio City just north, Tremont as well. And so what, what is really exciting about Stockyard is not only that we have this kind of legacy of residents uh, who have been in the neighborhood for a long time, who care about the neighborhood, who have fought for the neighborhood, uh, but also... Uh, we're going through a master planning process in the uh, Stockyards Clark Fulton neighborhood because we know what's coming down the line. We know that investment will be coming into the neighborhood. And so what we're doing is creating an inclusive community-based visioning process for the neighborhood so that when that investment comes, it's on the terms of our neighborhood residents, which is really exciting. So great group of people. We've got, a you know, it's also, uh, Ray, the largest uh, population of um Hispanic folks in the state of Ohio reside in the uh, greater kind of Clark Fulton Stockyard, Brooklyn Center area. So the incredible uh, culture that, you know, started uh, with large, largely so in the 60s uh, to today, we still see um, folks uh, coming to the area from not only Puerto Rico, which is our biggest uh, pipeline of folks, but from other parts of Central and South America choosing to come to stockyards. I'll say one, a couple other things, Ray, which are really exciting to me. Number one is the small business growth. So we're seeing more and more community-based small businesses open. Uh, one of the great examples of that is a business incubator called Las Tienditas, which translates to the little stores. Um, and that is a business incubator um, that is, you know, there's a coffee shop, there's a, a place of pastries, all sorts of different uh, amenities that are opening up. Uh, in addition to that, one of the really exciting parts of Stockyards is uh, the Newcomers Academy, which is a CMSD school specifically tailored for uh, newcomers to the United States who may be learning English, may be trying to learn a new culture, uh, and that school is geared around getting them assimilated uh, into what's, you know, Cleveland, and, and, and not to, you know, damper at all the culture, but to get them on their feet when they get here in Cleveland. And I think that's important, Ray, in a bigger picture, too, because the history of Cleveland has been fueled by immigrants. I mean, my last name, Ray, we came over on the ships from Ireland. You, you hear, you know, people from all different parts of the world that have come to Cleveland. Um, and what we see from an economic perspective is the city has been economically healthiest when we had our highest number of immigrants. So kind of really thinking about how do we nurture that growth in a city and in a region that needs it, right? And I think that's a really interesting aspect of the Stockyards neighborhood, being home to the Newcomers Academy. And I think the, the, the people that live in that neighborhood really take a great sense of pride in that neighborhood. So it's great, to see, them have a, it's great to see them have a seat at the table uh, for what that future of that neighborhood's gonna be. Absolutely. You know, there's another neighborhood that, that I know you're, you're my councilman because I'm a part of this neighborhood that a lot of people don't see as really a neighborhood. And that's the uh -huh. downtown neighborhood, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. So, we've, I mean, we've, we've, we've seen some struggles over the past. I mean, it's been a difficult year. We've seen some struggles, but there really are some really great things going on in, in, in my neighborhood, right? In the downtown neighborhood. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And Ray, I'll say that, you know, when I joined council five years ago, I spent a whole lot more time explaining to people that downtown is a living, breathing, thriving residential neighborhood. Fast forward five years now, I, I spend a whole lot less time doing that, which is a good thing. So I think people are really understanding that we've got 20,000 folks that live in downtown Cleveland. Our residents are organizing the downtown Cleveland residents. The Residents Association is thriving. It's booming with thousands of members in it. Um, and so we're really starting to see um, the same kind of demands and interests of any other neighborhood uh, bloom in downtown Cleveland. So uh, looking at ways that we can uh, have uh, more multimodal connectivity so folks don't have to use their car so much. How can they jump on a bike or a scooter or public transit or walk and make sure our city is 
designing our roads and our spaces to accommodate that. That is what is going to make it better, easier, and safer to navigate downtown Cleveland. Thinking about the grocery stores that have come into downtown Cleveland, thinking about the small businesses that are opening in downtown Cleveland, and thinking about how we can continue to increase the quality of life of folks in downtown is paramount to what uh, you know, the, 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 the health and well-being of downtown. I think another really great thing, too, that we're seeing is the connectivity to other neighborhoods in and around downtown. So right now we're looking at a loop between West 25th Street and downtown over the Lorraine Carnegie Bridge, uh, a multimodal uh, loop where you can ride your bike, run, uh, you know, take a scooter, whatever it might be. You know, the uh, midway that will take you from Public Square to East 55th on a buffered bike lane. These are the types of things that are coming online that will make it an even more desirable place to, whether you're working, you're living, you're visiting, uh, to use. It's, 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 you know, it's not um, breaking news that you make a place more people friendly. People want to stay there, right? So, so no doubt about it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as you noted earlier, Ray, uh, there's no sugarcoating that 2020 has been a tough year for many reasons and globally all the way down to the local level. Uh, and we've seen that in downtown Cleveland and, you know, we've seen that in downtowns uh, across the country. And we're in regular contact with our colleagues across the country uh, on this very issue. And, you know, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, when you take a pandemic that says uh, to the 110,000 people that come to work downtown every day, uh, hey, you got to stay home and you remove that foot traffic, um, it has an impact on the city. There's no doubt about that. The small businesses that rely on uh, our workforce downtown, um, you know, the, the just the positive traffic it brings when you have that economic activity uh, has been, has been um, you know, has hurt downtown for sure. The thing, though, I would say, Ray, is that, you know, while we know that uh, we've seen that impact in our downtown neighborhood, uh, and also, too, I mean, a, a big reason that folks uh, move downtown is are the amenities, right? And unfortunately, whether you live downtown or you're visiting downtown, you close the theaters, you close the ball field, you, you know, close the offices, it's going to have a negative impact. Um, so, but moving forward, you know, today, um, you know, Ray, and I don't know how this will be time stamped, but um, today is Monday. What's the date? The 15th or something like that? Yeah, uh, vaccines are going into arms today. COVID vaccines are going into people's arms in Ohio today. So we're starting to see the end of, of this period. We're start beginning of the end of it, right? We're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And as, um, you know, more and more people get vaccinated um, and as people start to come back downtown to work and to visit, we're going to see that economic vibrancy tick back up. Um, so, you know, again, we're, we're not going to sugarcoat this. It's going to take some time to, to build back uh, the momentum that we had in downtown Cleveland, but we're going to get there because the inherent value of our city core is so special and it's so uh, incredible to experience that we will get back to that point uh, and, and better, in my opinion, because I think, you know, people have realized uh, that how much we loved going to a ball game or going to a theater or going to our favorite restaurant downtown. And I think what we'll see is when we have that opportunity to return to do so, people will be doing so in large uh, amounts. So, um, you know, unfortunately, we've seen some restaurants close, some great Cleveland restaurants, Ray, but um, we're also seeing new life, right? So we have Luca opening up in the warehouse district. Uh, we've got um, Goma uh, the, by Chef Dante opening up on East 4th. So we're also starting to see some um, life coming into what, what has been a really tough year? Yeah, I think, you know, with the, the resiliency of Clevelanders themselves and the people that come and live and work here, uh, I think I, I agree with you. It's going to make the community even that much stronger uh, after the challenges that we've had this past year, right? So you did allude to that, right? And you did allude to the, the challenges we've had and the epidemic. And, and as we sit here today, uh, we're coming up on the holidays. Hopefully we're making a turn uh, into 2021, getting past uh, and, and hopefully seeing the end of the tunnel, right? And now, as you mentioned, the vaccines are now starting to go out. And I think let's talk a little bit about that and your role as chair of the Health and Human Services Committee with the city and how that's going to be impacted going forward now as we as we hopefully do turn that corner. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, we just took over the chairmanship of the Health and Human Services Committee. I was vice chair prior working with Councilman Griffin, taking on really important issues like lead paint poisoning and infant mortality and the effects that racism have on our community. 
Um, and so, you know, we're going to continue that work, no doubt, but also, uh, you know, we're going to be laser focused to um, on the on the pandemic, as well as our making sure that our health department is running uh, top notch and, and efficiently. So uh, I think, right, one of our, you know, we've got the challenge, the logistical challenge of getting the vaccine, uh, getting the amount we need, and, you know, the basic logistics of that. But we also have a, a challenge of uh, working with folks to convince them it's that, you know, that they should take the vaccine. And, and look, I'll tell you, um, there's good reason for that. You know, in, in American history, we've seen, especially in our communities of color, especially in our black community, uh, we've seen government agencies really shatter the trust of the community uh, by things like the Tuskegee experiment and other, you know, um, medical, um, total medical malpractice and, you know, horrifying incidents in our, in our history. So it's, you know, what we're talking about now is working with our, our, our grassroots community folks, so our pastors, our community activists, our residents, public health experts, you know, and others to get a message out there of why it's important to take this vaccine. Um, it's going to have to come from the grassroots, right? It's not going to come from a medical director, you know, sure, there'll be a part of it, but it's got to come from neighborhood residents and leaders to say, hey, folks, uh, you're, you're right to be, you know, curious and skeptical, but here's why it's so important to take this safe vaccine. Here's the data. Here are the facts. Uh, so, you know, we're gonna, it's going to be a big blitz to make sure that we're getting the accurate information out there to folks so that they can get vaccinated, protect themselves, protect their families from the effects of this, uh, this virus. So, you know, we're going to be making sure that uh, that is happening. That message is getting out there. These vaccines are getting to people that need them in an equitable manner in the city of Cleveland, because that's really the key. That is going to be the key when we start to think about getting folks back to work, back to restaurants, back to uh, being able to earn a, a wage for their family. It's going to be getting these vaccines and that herd immunity that's achieved through the vaccines, right? So um, that's going to be critically important for our, 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 our committee, and we're going to be tracking that through the new year. Councilman, some of our friends that are going to be watching this particular discussion that you and I are having are not only from Cleveland or downtown or the surrounding areas, but they're also from outside of the Cleveland area. Mm -hmm. They're going to be watching this. As we wrap up this, this discussion, what message do you want to send, not only to those residents of Cleveland and those people that work downtown, but those friends of ours that are from outside of Cleveland going forward as we're moving into 2021? Sure. So what I would say is, look, it, you, there, again, it has been a tough year uh, for many reasons, and, and we can just see that all around us. But, you know, it, I think what is incumbent upon us as a community, and by the way, you know, I'm, I'm a city kid, born and raised in North Collinwood. I live in Ohio City now. Um, but what happens in the city core affects the burbs and vice versa. So I don't view this as a us versus them, those folks over there, those, for, you know, as a region, we are interconnected and we, we've got to, you know, embrace that as a community. So, you know, that, that's how I view this. But really what I would say is, you know, through this really tough year, it's incumbent upon our community to think about how we can be even better coming out of this. So whether that is, uh, stepping up how you help others, uh, supporting a nonprofit organization, helping those in your community, whether that is thinking, uh, how do we get more strategic about job growth in our region, population growth? We can't come out of this and say, okay, we're just going to roll back to where we were last year. It's incumbent upon this region to learn from this past year and really think creatively and collaboratively and break down silos and leave the egos at the door to say, how do we get Northeast Ohio to be better, vibrant, growing, uh, more, you know, uh, more equitable, healthier, safer moving into the future? Because the world is not waiting for us. I mean, we have got to think creatively and together today so that we are building a future that's going to be healthier and safer and, and more, more prosperous moving into the future. You know, let's, and, and, and right too, let's set big goals. Uh, let's set a population growth goal for this region. Let's set a job growth goal for this region. Let's set a, a goal to, um, you know, uh, dramatically reduce infant mortality and poverty and violence. I mean, we've got to really think through a vision of where this region needs to be. You know, one thing I, you know, you and I have discussed in the past, Ray, is that I grew up in the city, but I was in Spain for a couple of years teaching English and did a whole bunch of traveling uh, through that opportunity. Came home broke, but worked a couple of jobs and was able to travel. 
And what I learned from that moving home is how much potential Cleveland and this region has and how we need to do a better job of leveraging that potential. There are areas of this, and let's just be real, there are areas of this country, Ray, that are growing and thriving at a higher level than Northeast Ohio that have half of our potential. That's unacceptable. So and it's incumbent upon us to break down silos, to work together, to see our region as one. We are one region and to move our region forward for growth and for health and for prosperity. And that's going to happen if people take an extra step up to invest in their community. And I don't just mean dollars, but invest in their time and their, their um, you know, talents as well. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Pre-COVID, this was a really, really good place to be. I think post-COVID, I think this can be a really, really great place to be. Absolutely. So I couldn't agree with you more. Councilman Kerry McCormick, my friend, thank you very much for your time this morning. Uh, what, I'm not sure when this is gonna, uh, gonna air, but you and your family uh, have a very happy and healthy 2021. You too, thank you so much, Ray. Thank you, Councilman.